So hello everyone and welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Douglas Johnson. I am a certified yoga teacher, ordained minister, and kirtan artist. And on this channel, I like to share my personal experiences, my experience of guiding others on this path in the hopes that it is of help to you. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about seeing suffering or difficulties as opportunities. So this is something I've talked about in the past, but I would like to elucidate it a little bit more just based on what I've been experiencing in my life and what I hear is going on for other people. Before I do that, however, I do want to thank my patrons on Patreon. They generally make these talks possible by contributing monthly and allowing me to do this essentially as part of my work or part of my job. If you'd like to become a part of that community or make a one-time donation via PayPal or Venmo, please check out the links below. All right, so seeing suffering difficulty in your life as an opportunity to ask questions. As I said in a previous video, my experience is that there really is no such thing as unnecessary suffering, suffering that has no purpose. Generally, we suffer because something we believe, um, something we're resisting, something we're holding on to is no longer really appropriate for us in the stage of growth that we're in. And so we begin to feel suffering or pain of some sort. And so from this view, these are, when we're experiencing suffering, when we're experiencing pain, ill health, whatever it might be, uh, even if these are from birth, or these are things that come early on, these are opportunities for us to ask questions and examine things if they are causing us suffering. And generally, what we find is there are lessons or there are opportunities, there are hidden treasures in that examination. My sense is that most people who grow up in the culture that I grew up in, which is here in the United States, or you could say Western society or industrialized society. If we get sick, for instance, we immediately just start looking for a cure. Uh, we don't really ask, well, why am I sick? Or why did I get sick? Or what is this illness trying to show me or teach me? Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't look for a cure, um, but again, in my experience, there is usually something to be learned or gained by asking questions, by being curious. And this is something, again, that most of us don't do. We just sort of assume I'm sick, something is wrong, and I need to fix it. Uh, and we don't ask the question, well, why am I sick? Or is this sickness trying to show me something or teach me something? Now, this can go for anything. Uh, for me, I had some very um, challenging emotional things, grief, sadness, loneliness, heartbreak, that came up for me over the past year. And this is really no different. Uh, we can experience emotions and not suffer. Even sadness, even grief, uh, even heartbreak. We can experience all these things from a place of joy. I know that might sound very, very strange if you've never experienced it for yourself, but um, I assure you, these are things that I have experienced personally. It is possible to experience the full range of human emotions and human experience from a place of 
gratitude and joy and love and appreciation. So if we take this as a given, if we have this knowledge, and again, many of us, we don't. We, and if you don't believe me, you don't believe me. I, that's not a problem for me. But uh, if you're listening to this, you probably get a sense that that's true. Uh, and again, this is something I have experienced for myself, so I know it's possible. The full range of human emotion can be experienced in a way that you could say at its core is joyful, at its core is grateful. We aren't trying to resist sadness or grief or loneliness or heartbreak. We can experience them as a flow, just like we might experience a movie with heartbreak or sadness or loneliness and we love the movie, right? We're able to enjoy the movie the whole way through. Um, a human life is very, very similar to this. So the question we want to ask is, if I'm not able to do that, then what is going on? Why am I not able to do this? Why am I not able to experience whatever it is that I'm going through in a sort of a positive way? Why am I experiencing suffering? So I don't want to say that there is one easy or quick answer to this, because I don't believe that there is. But a few things that I've observed and might be helpful to you uh, are, one, the answer in my experience is never that there is something fundamentally wrong with you. And I think a lot of people here when I say ask questions, this is, you know, what I might be talking about. Oh, well, I'm selfish or I'm greedy or I should be more loving or whatever it is. For me, that isn't really the type of answer we're looking for. Usually, it will be something that we are holding on to. It could be a belief or an emotion, a memory. It could be something we are resisting or trying to push away. But it's something that we are doing moment by moment without really realizing it. We, you could say the fundamental ground of being is peace, joy, bliss. Um, and if we aren't experiencing that, then in some way we are holding on to or resisting something in some form or another. And so this is the kind of answer that we're looking for. What, what way am I resisting my current experience? Or what am I holding on to? What belief or idea, limiting belief about myself, about reality, am I holding on to that is causing the suffering? So again, it, it isn't really about guilt or shame or anything like that, where we are looking for how we're uh, faulty or how we are fundamentally sick or ill or damaged. I also want to emphasize that it really isn't about your past. Uh, a lot of people, I think, believe that they have past trauma, what they call past trauma. I don't want to get too deep into it today, but from the enlightened viewpoint, for lack of a better way of putting it, from an awake, a very awake viewpoint, there really is no past and future as we conceive of it. Past and future are created in the present moment. Okay? They are created with thoughts and images words, stories, ideas, but if we really dive deep into the present moment, we find that there really is no past. There is no future. So if there really is no past, then how can something from the past traumatize us or control us in the present moment? The answer is they really can't. 
So again, this is a rather deep concept and I'm not trying to invalidate anyone who believes that they have childhood trauma that they need to deal with or any of these kinds of things, but I am pointing toward something that ultimately these things can be dealt with in a spiritual way that is fundamentally different than the way we may be thinking about it uh, from a conventional viewpoint. Because again, the conventional viewpoint basically accepts that the past is real and that we have been damaged in the past somehow and that we now need to deal with or live with or fix that damage. And again, this viewpoint that I'm trying to share with you, and again, this isn't about invalidating anyone else's point of view, but it is about sharing perhaps a different perspective that you've not heard before. So from this point of view, where past, future, present collapse down into the present, what we call the present moment or the eternal now, we can only be healed in the present now. We can't go back and change the past. Uh, we can't control the future, but we can deal with what's present and that's where our power is. And this is again what this talk is fundamentally about, being curious if I'm suffering in this moment, then asking questions in this moment and examining this moment with curiosity, with an open mind, uh, this is really the way forward um, in my experience. So examining, what am I believing, holding onto or resisting in this moment? And the more that you can focus on this very moment, uh, I think the more your inquiry will be fruitful. Uh, because again, it really is about examining this moment in really, really fine detail. So when we start thinking about, again, larger conceptions about reality and about bringing in other people and things like that, then it's, it starts to water down the process and perhaps doesn't allow us to go as deep. So letting go of future, letting go of past, letting go of our story. And again, I'll share from my own personal experience is a very somatic process. So it really is about inquiring into the body what we're feeling, because generally as human beings, as embodied beings, we take our cues from the body. So if the body is reacting negatively to something, then examining the body, where we're feeling it, what we're feeling, um, is generally going to really help guide us. And we might find there are certain feelings in our body that are tied to certain beliefs, ideas, thoughts, memories, images. And these are really what we want to become aware of and examine and possibly let go of. Because again, one of the things I said is holding on, holding on can definitely cause us suffering. Also, again, resisting can cause us suffering. Believing certain things that are fundamentally not true about us, about reality, about other people, these things can cause us suffering. And these, in my experience, are usually the source of the suffering. All right, everyone. I hope this was helpful for you. I'd love to hear your experience with these processes. Either maybe you've already, you're familiar with them, maybe you're already using them, or perhaps you can use them now. 
with something that you're dealing with in the present moment, come back and share that with us in the comments below. If you have any questions, reach out. You can leave them in the comments below. I always read the comments. And until next time, namaste and have a beautiful, beautiful day.